What if I told you that the majority of Presbyterian pastors don't actually teach Presbyterian things? Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Craft, where I build this big church in Minecraft while I talk about Christianity. And today I'm going to be talking about something you've probably never heard of before, which is because I made it up. But um, yeah, I made up this word called Presbacterian to refer to Presbyterians who are very influenced by Baptists in their teachings, especially with regard to the sacraments. So I um, honestly think that the majority of Presbyterians, especially in denominations like the PCA or other um, uh, Presbyterian denominations that could be categorized as evangelical, I really think that the majority of these people are presbyterian in terms of their in terms of their teaching. Now, I'm not trying to go on like a witch hunt or anything. I'm not I don't have anything against these people. Like these people include um like Tim Keller, RC Sproul, and basically most famous presbyterian pastors. And there these men are brilliant um, men, brilliant teachers of the word, brilliant men of God. So I'm not speaking against them. I'm I'm big fans of both of them, of you know all the you know famous Reformed Presbyterian guys like Tim Keller and R.C. Sproul or some other people like Sinclair Ferguson. But um, if you notice, if you think about the people they dialogue with, it's largely Baptist. You know Tim Keller's like best friends with John Piper, and R.C. Sproul was best friends with uh, John MacArthur. So. Uh, yeah, they interact a lot with Baptists because Baptists just simply dominate in the evangelical world. So it's just kind of inevitable. Um, and they don't really dialogue with as much with like Lutherans or Anglicans, despite the fact that the Reformed tradition has historically been more closely associated with those groups. But now in like modern American evangelicalism, it um, there seems to be a lot more association among Presbyterians with with Baptists. So the result is they do end up influencing the way we think about things, particularly about the sacraments. So this this is this is the most important issue uh, for me in, in regards to this. And I think the way someone talks about the sacraments uh, indicates to me whether they're like a um, really a Presbyterian in regards to that, or whether they're a Presbapterian. So um, for all of church history, it was known that the sacraments are not just mere symbols, they actually do something. What do they do? That's been debated. The particulars have always been debated, and there's been no consensus on exactly how they work. But there has been a unanimous consensus that something happens in the sacraments, and by that we refer to the, uh, the Lord's Supper and baptism. It's a very modern thing to say that the sacraments are just symbolic, and the Baptists were the first ones to really say that. Um, there's also like you know Zwingli and the Anabaptists, but the the bro the overall broad Baptist tradition was the first group of people to say the sacraments are basically just symbolic; they don't actually do anything. So um, the Reformed tradition, if you look at the Confessions, if you look at what Calvin taught, if you look at what John Knox, the founder of Presbyterianism, taught, the Reformed tradition is in agreement with the rest of church history that the sacraments, um, the sacraments actually do something. Now, unlike Catholics and Lutherans and even Eastern Orthodox, we would stop short of saying the sacraments have any power in themselves. Like... Um, when we say that Christ is really present in the Lord's Supper, we don't believe that the bread and wine actually physically turn into the body and blood of Christ. We believe that the Holy Spirit communicates Christ's real presence to us. The so, like, so we believe that something happens in the sacraments, but it's never by their own power. It's always by the inner working of the Holy Spirit through them. But regardless, something still happens. Like that. That's the real. That's the real issue here. So. Our view is, of course, not identical to like a, a Lutheran view, but it's a lot more similar to a Lutheran view than it is to the sort of a. It's just a symbol that that it doesn't really do anything. That it's way more similar than to to that sort of view. Um, but but even so, even so, um, that the sort of symbolic view, the sort of uh, memorialistic view with regard to the Lord's Supper, 
does kind of has kind of taken over a lot of Presbyterian churches. So um, I was once um, I was just listening to uh, a, a church service from this uh, PCA church. And it was a good sermon, um, but then when they got to the Lord's Supper, the pastor literally said, this represents my body instead of this is my body. And I, I wanted to scream because like even a Baptist li likely wouldn't misquote it like that. So if the Presbyterian, if the Reformed confessions clearly say that the sacraments are way more, that the sacraments are more than just mere signs, then why do so many Presbyterian pastors kind of act like they're just symbolic? Um, and the reason, I think, is because we've been influenced by Baptists. Because Baptists say, oh, it's just a symbol, so a lot of Presbyterians kind of talk like that. Uh, take the issue of baptism. Um, the, his, the, the creeds all teach that um, in every sacrament, there's a sacramental union between the outward sign and the inward reality signified. So because of that, it's right to say that there's a real connection between baptism and salvation, that baptism saves because um, baptism is defined as both the outward sprinkling with water and the inward conversion, which is done only by the power of the Holy Spirit. So because there's the sacramental union, because the outward sign of water is connected, to the inward reality of being born again of the Spirit, we would say that baptism saves, historically speaking. However, it's very, very common in modern Presbyterian churches to hear people say, oh, baptism doesn't save, it just it just points to it just points to salvation. It just it um it points to the, the grace of God which saves, but no baptism doesn't save. So yeah, it's uh, it's very common to hear um a lot of modern Presbyterian churches talk like that, particularly the ones that are more evangelical in nature, like the PCA, like I said. Now, the PCUSA, the mainline Presbyterian Church, I'm not going to say it's good, because it's not. It has way bigger problems than the PCA, but one of the problems it does not have is that it's not influenced by Baptist. It, the One of the problems it does not have... It doesn't have the same problems as the PCA. It has its own bigger problems, but being influenced by Baptist theology on the sacraments is not one of them. So... Um, here are some ways to tell if someone is a Presbyterian or a Presbapterian in regards to the sacraments. So, um, here's the question. Is Christ truly present in the Lord's Supper? And by that, I mean, not only is he present in the way he's present everywhere else, but do we really receive the body and blood of Christ in the Lord's Supper when we take the Lord's Supper? The traditional Presbyterian answer is yes. The Presbapterian answer is no, but we just, um, we sort of commune with Christ because we remember what he did for us or something like that. More specifically, um, baptism is um, a more clear one. Like, ask, does baptism do anything other than the external, like, for, for the elect, does baptism actually confer that which it signifies. So the um, traditional Presbyterian belief is that baptism actually does confer what it signifies for the elect, for those that end up having faith. But, um, you know, because we have this thing called the sacramental union. But for a Presbapterian, they'd, they would say the only things baptism actually does are the external benefits. They would say uh, baptism signifies someone as part of a uh, part of the covenant community. They would say, you know, baptism points to the grace of God. Baptism symbolizes our cleansing of sin, but they wouldn't actually say it does anything. Now we don't believe it does anything by its own power, like in and of itself. But because of the sacramental union, it is sacramentally united to um, being born again, being born of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus said, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they have been born of, what? Water and the Spirit. So we believe there are two parts of baptism. There's baptism by water, there's baptism of the Holy Spirit, but we can't separate the two. We can distinguish the two and recognize they don't necessarily occur at the same moment, but we don't separate the two. It's like, we distinguish Jesus' human nature from his divine nature. Of course we do. We're not monophysites. We don't believe Jesus has just one nature. We distinguish his two natures. 
but we don't separate them. So when we say Jesus is God, we don't say, hey, hey, no, only his divine nature is God. No, Jesus is one person, so it's right to say Jesus is God, even though his human nature isn't God. So does baptism save? Well, the um, baptism is made of the sign and the, and the thing signified. There are two parts of a sacrament, according to the Reformed Confessions. So it's like the outward sign in and of itself doesn't save, but the inward reality signified does save, and baptism is made of both. In each sacrament, there's a spiritual relation between the sign and the thing signified. That's pretty much a direct quote from the Westminster Confession. So it's because of that, it's right to say that baptism saves. And someone who doesn't say baptism say, who saves, or who says baptism doesn't save, as I've heard a lot of Presbyterian pastors say, well, then they don't really have a Presbyterian view on that. So I'm going to put this quote on the screen from John Knox, who's the founder of Presbyterianism. Um, now, I'm quoting from memory, so I'm going to quote this a bit wrong. It says, And thus we utterly damn the vanity of those who affirm the sacraments to be nothing but naked and bare signs. Assuredly, we believe that by baptism we are ingrafted into Christ to become partakers of his justice by which something about the remission of sins. And in the Lord's Supper, rightly used, not that we imagine any transubstantiation, as the papists do. I don't, I, I don't use that word. I just say Catholic. Um... Papist is a, a derogatory word for Catholic, but given historical context, you know, they, they hated each other a lot more back then. Anyway, so, yet yeah, the point is, um, John Knox, founder of Presbyterianism, when he wrote the Scots Confession, which is a Presbyterian confession, he, was, he could not have been clearer that baptism and the Lord's Supper, the two sacraments, really do stuff. They're not just, they're not just symbolic, they're not just signs. So it's very common in, a, in Presbyterian churches to hear the language of, of sign and seal. It's like, you know, baptism is a sign and seal. The Lord's Supper is a sign and seal. Now, yes, it is, but it's not just that. Um, so they'll say it's a sign because it points to the grace of God, and it's a, a seal because it, um, uh, I don't know, I do, do a fake southern accent there. And it's a seal because it, um, you know, seals us as part of the covenant. But, you know, does it actually do anything in terms of salvation? They're like, no, it just it just symbolizes that. And that's not the historic reformed view. Now, I really think that uh, reformed Christians have the perfect balance between two, I mean, perfect, I wouldn't say balance. I'd say anything on, there are errors on either side of Reformed sacramentology. So the error on one side, unlike the Baptist side, is the idea that, you know, it's just a symbol, bro. Like, wait, does baptism save? No, it's just a symbol, bro. Is this really the body and blood of Christ? No, it's just a symbol, bro. So yeah, just a symbol, bro, is like one of the errors on like one side of the issue that Reformed Christianity teaches against. On the other hand, the error on the other side is sort of, you know, with regard to baptism, I would call it the magic water approach. Like, um, by the way, do I say water weirdly? I'm, I'm from New York, and a lot of people think that, you know, I pronounce it weird. Anyway, the, the, the magic water approach that, oh yeah, baptism is this magical water that washes away your sins. No, we don't believe that. We don't believe it's just a symbol, bro. And we don't believe it's magic water. We believe that the water is just an outward sign, but that the Holy Spirit really does work through it for those who have faith. Um, in regards to the Lord's Supper, we um, don't believe it's just a symbol, but we also don't believe that, you know, the bread and wine magically change into something else. We believe that through ordinary bread and wine, the Holy Spirit communicates Christ's real body and blood to us. So we believe the sacraments do something, but the action is on the part of God himself, not on the part of the sacraments. The sacraments is just are just like tools he chooses to work through, but he actually is working through them. They're not just for um, stuff that they remind us of. So yeah, we have, we have to be we have to be very clear on that. Um, so uh, yeah, it's and a again, I'm not trying to speak against my brothers in Christ here. I'm just trying to I'm just I just want people to be aware of what their own tradition is, because I've um, I have a lot of uh, Presbyterian friends who were Presbyterian in terms of their beliefs. And to be honest, I was Presbyterian 
in my view of the sacraments before I learned what the historic Presbyterian view was. And once I learned, I was like, okay, this actually seems to make a lot more sense because, you know, I, I read the Westminster Confession um, and the Westminster Confession, which is the main Presbyterian Confession, has, you know, scripture quotes for everything it says. So I was like, yeah, this makes sense. So um, I'm not saying that, oh, you're you're like a fake Presbyterian. I'm going to like totally expose you. No, I'm, I'm not like that. Um, I know sometimes I sound like that because I have a, an, an intense way of talking. But, but that's not my intention. My intention is just to get people to know their own tradition because I'm, I'm pretty sure most Reformed Christians, once they learn what it what the Reformed tradition teaches, they change their mind, which is what happened with a lot of my Presbyterian friends when I showed them. Like, I asked them, you know, does baptism save? And they're like, no, it's just a sign of the covenant. And then I showed them uh, the, the the Scots Confession and what Westminster says about the sacramental union. They're like, okay, yeah. And they some of them are still like, yeah, maybe technically you could say it saves in a sense, but I don't want to confuse people, so I, I get why we don't say that. And it's like... Yeah, it can be confusing, especially if you say it with no qualifications, but it's really not that hard to explain to people. It's really not that hard to say it's a symbol of something, but it actually, it's it's a symbol that's connected to the thing it symbolizes. Like, that is not a, a, a super complex concept, I, I gotta say. That's, um, so we, of, we often act like people are, are too dumb to understand theology, and that's that's simply not the case. A lot of people, most lay people are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. I'm saying most lay people as if I'm a pastor. I'm a lay person. Uh, I'm not a pastor at all. I, I've not gone to seminary or, or anything like that. I'm just a guy with a computer and with opinions, <laughs> basically. All right, so that's about the end of this video. Before I, um, you know, leave, get out of here, I'm gonna wanna jump down safely uh, and then after that I'm gonna speed this up. And the reason I speed things up is I, I'm building a magnificent church here, and I want everyone to know that it's all legit in survival mode. So when I gather resources, I generally want the camera to be rolling even if it's sped up, just so that there is video proof that I built all this in survival. And I'm not, this is just the very, very beginning. So this is more or less what the front of the church is going to look like. I'm going to add stained glass in there and in there. And it's going to look, it's still going to look so much bigger than this. And of course, um, this is just the, the very bottom of this. I'm going to have stained glass in all of there. I'm going to decorate the windows a lot more. I'm going to have a big cross. I'm going to build something that looks like an organ. But yeah, this church is going to be awesome. It's going to take a long time to build it, but I really like how it's coming along. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.